الله الكفاء وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد تعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدي لهم سبلنا سبحان ربك رب العزة عنا نسيتون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم الله سبحانه وتعالى he revealed the beginning of the Quran the first ayat of the Quran to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who knows where in what cave Ghadihira, right? In Jabal Nur, which is uh, translated as a mountain of light, which is about just outside the city of Mecca. Okay, so if you ever go there, I had a, the, the honor and the opportunity of visiting one time and climbing up that mountain. It's a very small cave. You climb up the mountain, it's a very tiny little cave. That's where the Prophet that's where he was. And at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began the revelation to the Prophet So the first ayat of the Qur'an Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq Khalaq al-insana min alaq Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram Alladhi allama bil qalam Allam al-insana ma la ya'lam We have a father here, did I do it right or not? Yeah. Yes or no? Okay. So What's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in his first revelation? Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq Read, recite in the name of your Lord. Khalaq al-insana min alaq He created human beings from a clot. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akra Recite in your Lord is the most generous. Alladhi allama bil qalam The one who taught through the pen. Allama al-insana ma la ya'lam The one who taught human beings what they didn't know. Now, obviously, these are, this is the beginning of revelation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to the Prophet about himself, about the origin of human beings, about his relationship, about the Quran, all these important things. And one of the things he mentions in these few ayat, one of the first things he mentions is qalam, the pen. And that blows my mind because the Prophet himself could, didn't use a pen and would, would never use a pen in his life. Why? Because you couldn't read and write. You couldn't read or write. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he felt it was so or it was so important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he mentioned it in spite of the fact that the Prophet himself wouldn't use a pen. Why? Well, this is the tool that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave human beings to transmit knowledge. And it's something that our Ummah should take very seriously. It seems very simple. It's just a, a, a tool that allows you to, to make an ink mark on, a, on some surface. But this, this tool is so important, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it. And I was, I was actually chatting with Sheikh Rami. Does everybody know Sheikh Rami? He, he's very active here, alhamdulillah. I was chatting with him, um, I think yesterday, about this. I just wanted to you know, get his advice and pick his brain a little bit about, about this uh, workshop. And he reminded me of something, that there's a surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually swears by the pen. Nun wal qalmi wa la Is that right? Wal qalmi wa ma yasturun. Wa ma exactly. The, by the pen, Allah SWT that swears by the pen and what it writes. And so he told, he reminded me, I had heard this story before, but I kind of forgot it, that Shaykh Hamza Yusuf actually told, a, told an interesting story that one time he was with Murab al Hajj, right? His teacher, who, who passed away recently. And he was with him when he was studying in Mauritania. And Sheikh Hamza was doing something with this pen. He was kind of playing with it or doing something like that. And whatever it was, Murat al Hajj felt that it was not as respectful as it should be towards the qalam, the pen. So you know what he asked him? He said, do you mock the thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore, swore with? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took an oath with the pen, right? And so he's asking Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, are you mocking this thing? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took an oath with. And then you can get into the detail about is it the, you know, the pen that wrote in al Mahfud or just a regular pen or whatever. But I'm not a scholar, so that my point is not to debate those things. But the point is simply how important 
this thing is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, fast forward to our age, right? Our ancestors, they used the pen. They, 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 they recorded the Quran, they recorded Hadith. Um, they record so many different types of sciences, optics and medicine and astronomy. So many things got passed down by scholars who used the pen and they record it into books and they, they taught their students. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that writing is the only means of transmitting knowledge. Of course, you have to have human to human contact. You have to have interaction. You have to have people um, demonstrate things. But the pen is what allows people to record stuff on on some permanent surface that they can communicate with future generations, right? That's really amazing that you want to talk to somebody, you know, a thousand years from now, write it down. Then they'll pick it up. They'll, they'll be able to read it in the future, inshallah ta'ala. Now, in our age though, what has happened? We have, we have these types of things, right? Where's my phone? We have phones. We have, uh, I think that's an iPad there probably, right? We have laptop computers. Here, I'll put this on. Can you guys see this? We have this kind of stuff. So we have kind of forgotten the art of using a pen, right? So what ends up happening is, go to a lecture, you go to the masjid, go to any place, and it's so easy. Like right here, mashallah, we're recording it, which is awesome, and hopefully people will benefit from that, inshallah ta'ala. But at the same time, when we personally go to a lecture and we hear all this useful information, especially if, you know the masjid or the madrasa or whatever, how, how often do we go through the trouble of actually recording what we learn? You know, Imam, Imam, how many people have heard of Imam Zarnuji? He was a scholar in the past, and he used to advise to, he was a scholar, but he said, I noticed that many students come to Madrasa and they put all this time and effort into going to Madrasa but then they leave and they don't benefit very much. And so he has a whole book called Ta'lim wa Ta'lim, which is an excellent book. Everyone should, should get a translation or read it in Arabic if you can. And one of the things in there, I think it's a whole chapter he has just on the importance of carrying a pen and ink with you everywhere you go. And this is like, like I don't even know how long, this is like hundreds of years ago he was giving this advice, right? So people, you couldn't go to Target in those days and just buy like a pack of 100 big pens or something. You, you had to actually carry, you know, like the old school reed pens and carry a little thing of ink. It was difficult to do. But he said, if you're a student, you have to do that because you never know when you're going to come across some kind of knowledge. And so he, he emphasized that. And look at us now, alhamdulillah, we have opportunity. We have so, especially in the Bay Area, mashallah, we have a lot of scholars. And we, we go through the effort to attend um, their lectures and, and their classes. They go through so much effort to prepare, but when that interaction happens and then we leave, we typically forget almost everything they say. And if a person even goes through the trouble of writing it down, what typically, I don't know, you, you guys tell me, this is what used to happen to me, was I would be rushing to write down every word because I felt it's so important, but then in the end, when I, when I, if I look back at my notes, it just scribbles because I'm just rushing to write everything down. And of course, I cannot capture everything. And in realistic, this happened for like 15 years. And you know, I would go to my teachers, I would take classes, and I would literally, I would dread looking back at my notes because I'd be like, "This is going to take so much work for me to decipher what I wrote myself." Why? Because I was rushing through it. So, alhamdulillah, about four years ago, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gave me tawfiq to to stumble upon this book, um, which really changed things for me. It's, it's, it's this book here called the Sketch Note Handbook. And um, can you guys see that? You guys see the screen, right? It's there too. Okay. So this book, I read through it, and I'll just kind of, you know, show you, give you an idea of what kind of stuff is in it. Basically what this author is saying, Mike Rohde, uh, this person, Mike Rohde, he basically says that he, he said that it is, he had the same problem. And I was like, oh my God, that, that's exactly what I was going through. He would go to also lectures. He would, he would frantically try to write everything down and it would turn out messy. So what he did was he decided to approach it in a totally different way. And that's what I want to share with you guys uh, this evening, inshallah. And that's what we're going to practice doing. Basically, you do this. You listen to the speaker. You just relax. 
And instead of trying to write down every single word, you just focus on listening to the speaker. What is the speaker trying to say? What's the main idea? What's the big idea that the speaker is trying to convey to you? You listen to that, you write that down. Slowly, in neat letters, in a way that you can understand it, and anybody else could understand it. And then, this is the new and interesting part, then he says, draw a quick sketch to represent that idea. It doesn't have, it's not art, it's not gonna be put up in an art museum, it's just for you. It's just for you to help you remember and understand what you wrote down, right? So it's this kind of, right, these are some, some really quick examples here, this kind of stuff. Now, I'll tell you something else very interesting, and Jeff Rami reminded me of this as well. The Prophet Sallallahu we know he did not read or write, but you know what he did used to do? He would draw in the sand. How many people knew that? Did you guys know that? I didn't know that for a long time, learned that recently. He's trying to explain something to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, to the companions. He would literally, he would draw, make like diagram kind of things in the sand to explain stuff. So as an example, Sheikh Rami reminded me of this, that one time the Prophet drew a line, okay? Then he drew a rectangle, sort of in the middle of the line. Then he drew, I think, like marks going through there. And he explained that the line represented people's hopes. This is that, I'm going to accomplish this, I'm going to accomplish that. That's their hopes. It extends far. But the box is just your actual life. Right? Isn't that true? We have hopes and desires and dreams that go way, you know, 100, 200 years. But actual, our actual life is just limited. It's whatever it's going to be. So that's, that's captured in that box. And then there's other lines there that represent the distractions. While we're heading towards those goals, in our limited life, there's distractions that keep us away from reaching our goals. So if we internalize that, that's, pretty, that's a pretty deep concept. What it basically means, take advantage of the life that you have now, cut out the distractions, focus on your goals, hopefully everything revolves around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and things relate to that. And then inshallah ta'ala, you'll have a chance to achieve those. But the point of the whole story was that the Prophet ﷺ used to use these kind of drawings to explain things. So that's again, in, in this author, Mike Rodi, you know, I had the honor of meeting him personally several times and studying with him. Very, very nice guy. Um, and, um, but at the end of the day, he's not Muslim. He wasn't doing it because the Prophet ﷺ um, used to do it. But he came to the conclusion that that's, that that's effective. And you know, our saying is, that wisdom is the lost property of the believer. Wisdom is the lost property of the believer. So if we learn something good, it doesn't matter if it's from a Muslim, a non-Muslim, wherever it is, we take it. We take it for ourselves and, and we use it. So are there any questions so far about what sketch noting is? It's, it's, it's a pretty straightforward idea. But you know, when you when you apply it and you use it, it can it can be very powerful. Um, so I'll, I'll pause a little bit for any questions, and while we're waiting for questions, I'll pull up some uh, some sample sketch notes. No, okay. So let me show you a few of these. This was from a uh, lecture that, do you guys know um, Jabir Tareen? Huh? He's from uh, Khalil Center. You guys have heard of Khalil Center, I assume. Yeah. Right? So he had a he had a thing about marriage. So um, uh, I had an opportunity to attend that alhamdulillah. So these are just some example sketch notes. And notice that like you know this is very simple. These are simple drawings, but the benefit is that now later on when I when I want to remember all the stuff that he said, I can go back to these notes and I can remember. Them. And my handwriting normally is really really bad. It's way worse than this. But this is, you know, it's good enough that I can at least read it, right? So that's the benefit. Um, I'll show you another one. I think, actually, these are all from relatively recent. This was a program um, in Fremont that they had about Islamophobia. Have you guys heard of Hatem Bazian? Brother Hatem Bazian. Um, he, he, he ran that program, so these are notes from that program. So anyway, that's the idea. 
Uh, any questions so far before we start the um, we start actually doing some sketch noting? No. All right. Let's 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 get started then. Mr. Long. So everybody has a notebook. I hope. Does anybody not have a notebook and a pen? We have a lot of notebooks and pens, so we'll give it to you. Do you guys need any back there? You guys have it? You know, okay, this one. Marion, can you take yeah. these? Thank you. Take this one. This, this one's okay. Okay. All right, this is long. So, most people, in my experience, what makes them hesitate with sketch noting is it, did you have a question? You're just No, you can ask. You sure? Yes, I'm very mature. I'll ask it later. Okay, no problem. So, a lot of people are afraid of drawing because they say, my, my drawing is horrible. Um, but the truth is, it can be horrible. It doesn't matter. It just has to convey that idea. It can be, it actually can be really horrible. I, you should see all my, especially my early sketch notes, they're horrible, like, you know, they, they look really bad. And like anything, because people come to me like, oh no, you draw so well. I don't draw so well, but, Whatever improvement there's been, it's just it's just through uh, practicing. So let's let's do a few uh, icons together, and then what we'll do is we'll play um, a video, and and then I'll do a demo sketch noting session, just very short, couple. It's a two minute video, and then I'm going to play an audio clip of an interview I interviewed my son here, um, and I did it on purpose because I wanted it to be slow enough for everybody to follow, and then and then you guys are going to sketch note it. And then whoever's brave enough, you're going to share it, inshallah, all right? That sound like a plan? Yeah. All right, good. All right, bismillah. So let's do, let's just do, start out with easy stuff. Let's do house. Everybody sketch a house. That's my house. Okay? Mary, right, you don't have to share this with anybody if you, if you don't want to. Okay, let's do car. Some people draw like race cars that are very cool, which I'm not good at. How about um, a heart? Good. Okay. How about um, let's do some more abstract stuff. Let's do um, strength. Strength. How would you do strength? I think I'm going to do my favorite. Strength. Notice this looks super weird, right? But who cares? Because it's just just for me to represent strength. Um, let's do uh, surprise. You guys still with me? Hold on, nobody's screaming and running out of the room, so that's already uh, <laughs> success. Sign of success, Marshall. Good. All right. Let's do. Um, let's do joy. Yes. 
It's red. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? My drawings are weird. Your drawings are weird. That's fine. The you know what the the good thing about weird drawings is the weirder they are, the easier they are to remember because they look you know because they're unusual, okay. right? Like if I did a if I did a foot. You know, that's, <laughs> that's already actually kind of weird. So let's just go with this little foot, right? I mean, it looks so strange. Like, nobody's foot looks like that. But then, you get, if you get it in a sketch note, it'll help you remember that, right? OK, all right, let's just move on. So let's move on. So let's jump into, can, Mom, can you pull up the, uh, <coughs> the video? الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. You know we live in an age where um, everyone is busy and um, it's becoming increasingly difficult for people to find time to do things. But part and parcel of our tradition of the prophetic tradition is to serve humanity. And Nabi Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم taught us that we need to be compassionate towards everything, ihsan towards everything in life, but specifically towards humanity as well and serve. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines that in the Quran as ukhrijat lin nas, right? We've been created for mankind. So we need to find time in our busy schedules in order to ensure that we're doing things for humanity. Um, as far as, uh, you know, not having time, that's the norm. But as human beings, we need to find time. And it comes from making a schedule. You know, we have a schedule to have passion for it, to understand its importance, its relevance. And as far as serving humanity, there's so many different things that one can do. Um, you know, everything from serving your community to people in other communities and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, certain things people are passionate about, other things you may not be. And so you need to find your passions and say, this is how I'm going to um, serve humanity and give back to society. I mean, it's, it's crucial that, that we do this. Um, otherwise, you know, otherwise we just, we'll just become lost and we won't have compassion in us and we won't care for other individuals. And uh, caring is what Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us. Brother, mashallah. See, look at that. Do you guys see that? Mashallah, Brother Kareem did this. Mount Thayer. He boxed it. People are busy. He has a clock symbol and a person. Find time to make a schedule. Look at that. And then, and then a calendar. Very nice. Zakhla Khair. It's great. See, so you guys are professional. Love it. Okay. So, now it's going to be your turn. So, Mama, can you start the, um, the audio clip, please? So we're gonna play an audio clip. Um, I tried, now let me tell you the backstory. I tried really hard to find a good video like the one that I used to do in Um They all move so fast though. I couldn't find one that was like just the right length and didn't move fast and all that kind of stuff. So in the end I gave up. I just said, I'm just gonna record Muhammad and I, my son Muhammad and I talking. Um, and then we purposely, the pace was a little bit slow. So we're gonna play that in Shaw and I want you guys to sketch note it, okay? And then when we're done, um, like I said, whoever's comfortable, you can share your sketch notes in shot. All right, this one. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Um, can you state your name? Muhammad. Okay, Muhammad. Um, so you're a Hafiz, I understand? Yeah. All right, cool. So um, I heard that in Madrasa, um, you make like really strong friendships that last for a lifetime. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, cool. So how many friends did you make? Uh, like five or six. Five or six. Okay, cool. Um, and what, what led to that? Was it just the fact that you were in the same mother's saw? Or what, what did you guys do that made you get so close? We spent like eight hours together with like no one else. Uh-huh. And like just hung out and like 
Memorize the Quran together. Yeah. So what made it so... Well, just the fact that you did all that stuff kind of mm-hmm. got you guys close. Did you guys feel like you kind of shared a struggle together? I assume it was difficult. Yeah. I mean, the memorizing the Quran part. Yeah, it was. All right. What yeah. about the... I mean, were there any good times? Did you guys play together? Did you guys do, like, fun stuff together, too? Yeah, like, sometimes during our break, our teacher would, like... Tell us to bring our Nerf guns to school or to class. Guns? And we brought them and then we'd have this big old Nerf gun war. And that was pretty fun. Okay, did you wear goggles and helmets and things like that? No, but we probably should have because the Hafez Sab took all the big guns uh-huh. and left us with like one shot pistols. Okay. Kind of murdered us. So you were kind of compensating through the Barca of your smaller, like weaker guns, but more Barca and his. Larger gun and maybe different amount of barca, or what was the what was the dynamic and the logic? We kind of just got flattened every time. Oh, you did. <laughs> so the office had the, a bigger gun and more barca. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Interesting. So what? So ha, so just you were saying just playing all that stuff together helped you guys. Yeah, it was it was a bonding experience. <laughs> Bonding. Awesome. All right, what else? How about just the actual hips, like the actual struggle of memorizing Quran and the ups and downs and all the um, all the difficulty? What? Well, was there any difficulty? I feel like I remember that there was some difficulty. Yeah, there was a little bit. Okay, so kinda you guys kind of shared that. Yeah. You guys got? Did you guys pat each other on the back and encourage each other and stuff like that? Yeah. Yes, you did? Of course we did. Wow. Okay, that's all. Well. What else did you guys do? I mean, did it help to just have somebody that who could understand what you were going through? Yeah. Yes, okay. Nice. And so what about after you finished shifts? Did you guys stay in touch? Yeah, we did. Uh-huh. Tell me about that. So we were just friends after that. So after we finished shifts, we just we went to public school and all that stuff. But we were still, like, chilling. We were still friends, so. Mm-hmm. What kind of stuff would you guys do? Like, like get together and memorize Quran, more Quran or review together? Yeah, nah, I, I don't, I wouldn't go that far. Uh-huh. But, um, we, we, like, just, like, had, like, sleepovers and stuff like that. Oh, nice, or okay. Like paintballing and go-karting. Oh, oh, sorry, well, I didn't mean to cut you off, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, we, we just do fun stuff like that together. Okay. <laughs> what I really wanted to ask was, um, food. So, mother says they're famous for making kids, like, super gluttonous and, in particular, pizza maniacs. So, did you guys ever eat pizza? Yes. And do you like pizza? Yeah. You do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else? So, uh, we had, we like pizza. Okay, so... Mr. Brost. This is California, Dad. No one knows what that is. Okay. Anyhow, <clears throat> we, one of the times, one of, so what happened was when you would finish memorizing a juice, if the parents of that child wanted, they could have a little party. So one time, one of my friends, there were only like six of us, we, he finished his juice, so he wanted to have a little party. So his mom was bringing ice cream, and he, she called half his, the Hafizab's phone, and he would normally give it to my friend. So my friend gets the phone, and his mom's like, oh, I'm coming with the ice cream. And Hafiz, oh, breaks ending. And then he's like, Hafizab doesn't want the ice cream. And then, and then what happened was he hung up, and Hafiz, the Hafizab was like, no, that's not what I meant. No, I, I want the ice cream. What do you mean? <laughs> so then... <laughs> he called, he made him call his mom back and tell him, no, the Hafizab does want to eat ice cream, but what my friend accidentally said was, the Hafizab, um, Hafizab wants to eat ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and his mom was kind of like dumbfounded on the phone and thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> so, did you guys get the ice cream or not? Yeah, we got the ice cream, some pretty good ice cream. So, that, what's interesting to me is that when I think back about like you and all your friends from Mother's house, Really, nobody's obese, and that's kind of shocking because you guys all love to eat. Okay. 
How'd it go? Pretty good. Yeah. Is yeah. able to follow along? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Sure. All right. Let's let's start from the right. Who who's ready to share their discussion? All right. You got to volunteer both again. Why don't you get by? Both of them. You volunteered each other. <laughs> okay. You know you, you don't have to do it if you're not comfortable. Okay. We'll come back. You are you raising your hand? No. Oh, you're not. Okay. Kareem, you ready? Uh, sure. All right, let's see it. Uh, I do like to separate the first video and stuff. Okay. So just focus on the bottom. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. Very impressive. So, okay. So tell us what's going on in your brain. I'm going to repeat what you're saying because I have the mic here. So you said you got the name on here? Yeah. Okay. And then, um, uh, then I wrote down like this five to six friends. Love one. it. And you have the friends here. Mashallah. Yeah. And then the next one, I think, well, I think I heard during the break they had a Nerf thing. Around. Yeah. So I feel a bunch of people. Oh, yeah. Look at this big Nerf fight going on. Is that what this is? Yeah. And, and then helicopter too. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And then uh, the, the, I heard that they did a bunch of fun stuff. Uh -huh. They drew a bunch of go karts and I don't oh, know right. if anybody's going to understand that that's a pizza. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> pizza. And that's pretty cool. Excellent. Thank you very much. Marshall. All right. Thank you so much. Who else? Are you comfortable? You want to do it? All right. All right. Just walk through. Okay. Yeah. So walk us through. This is great. Uh, so first one I have is that this is an interview with the dad and the son. The son's name is Muhammad. He's a hafiz. So he has about five or six friends that are in that Quran circle. Yeah. Uh, and that's their uh, Imam, who has the biggest Nerf gun. Yes. I love it. It's <laughs> awesome. And, yeah, and I also included that. So sometimes uh, the learning involves a lot of hard work, but yeah. there are fun times too. And yeah. sometimes include go karting and pizza. Nice. And sometimes I have a party after finishing <laughs> edges. And, uh, love it. This is awesome. Mush off. Very, very nice. Did you do this before? No. This is like, it was very natural. Mush off. All right. You guys want to do it? Yeah, go ahead. All right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, what's going on here? Uh, first one is being friends and then there's nerf guns nice look at that that's so awesome look at his face <laughs> yeah and then he's reading the quran Masha, this is so good this is like a comic format almost because you just read it from the top to the bottom and it's like telling a story okay yeah we'll go ahead what else and then pizza. Yeah. Love it. This is so good, Marshawn. Thank you. Okay, no? Okay, yes. What are your stuff? My emails. Okay. Next time, Michelle. Okay, no problem. You guys ready? All right. Oh, just give me a minute. Let's get her. No, go to this one. Okay, this is a lot. Yeah, tell us what's going on. Okay, so um, he, he like he, uh, he did Quran with his friends, and uh, it was an eight-hour program, and he made uh, a bond with his friends. He got closer, and they had a nerf fight. I mean, they were stuck with the smaller guns, and, but the Hafiz had the bigger guns, so they were like, kind of unfair. <laughs> what was your name, sister? Your name. 
Back row is super quiet. I know it's something. You guys are not gonna. No, I'm just kidding. But if you guys, if you guys have something ready, to do sure. All right. Who gets one? Okay. So they didn't want the strong practice. Are these like dead bodies? <laughs> it's like, are these arrows or no? They're like, no, these are dead. No, this is, okay, I'm just joking. Should we get into some um, drawing tricks? Yeah. You guys want to do that? Yeah. All right, let's move on. So trick number one is drawing people. Now, okay, who feels like if they draw a person, they're going to go to hell? 
<laughs> okay. So here's the deal. I asked a couple of scholars. If you, I'm not trying to change your opinion. If you believe that, no problem. But just FYI, I asked a couple of scholars, a hundred feet scholar and a mile feet scholar. The hundred feet scholar said you can draw. Um, <coughs> excuse me. As long as whatever you're drawing couldn't actually be a living thing, it's fine. So for as an example, like let's just say I draw a person. Um, like that. Um, let's just do it like that. Okay. So notice um, this guy's head is separated from the rest of his body. That's not, you can't live, right? That's not, I mean, a head by itself and a body by itself cannot be alive. So that's fine. If I connected it for the hunter fee, that would be a problem. Even though this is a totally ridiculous, useless drawing, but still. Let's just say you feel like it's it's too much, um, then then that wouldn't be okay. So it's so as you can see, it's super easy to get around it. You just do something to it that would make it not possible to actually be a living thing. So that's the that's the Hanafi position that as long as it couldn't be a living thing, it's fine. I talked to Sheikh Rami, who's a Maliki scholar. And he said the Maliki Madhav, pretty much everything's fine. There's really no problem. Because they, have, they and you can talk to him about the details, but they have an opinion that it's really, the, the prohibition against drawing and statues and all that has more to do with worshipping those things. So, anyway, if you're Maliki, you're clear. Or if you want to take the Maliki uh, position, you're clear. So you can, I can just go ahead and make this draft necktie. Right, and connect it. For the Maliki, it, it works. Okay? All right. So... But that's usually not how I draw people. So here's how I, I actually usually draw a person. Circle, rectangle, I put a note. So, excuse me, here's the interesting thing about the nose. Wherever, whatever direction you put the nose, it makes it look like the person's looking that way. So if I want to put a sun up here and the guy wants to burn his eyes out by looking at the sun, I make his nose point like that. Now it looks like he's looking at the sun, right? And then the legs, Line, a uh, circle with a little line, the hands come out, and these little U things, bam, that's a person. If I draw a woman, this is, this is how I almost always do it. Circle, then the hijab, then the um, jilbab or whatever it's called, feet poking out, and then same kind of arms. All right? And I guess she... She's just kind of looking over here. Okay? Other people do other ways. Other people do people, they draw people like this. That's another way. Yeah, you, of course, you can always do a stick figure. You guys comfortable so far? Yeah. Okay. Um, what else? <clears throat> How about 3D stuff? Uh-huh. Oh, I thought there was so how about, how about like a 3D gaba? This is one of my favorite th things to draw. If you saw this, would you think that's gaba or do you just think that's a random box or something? No, it's not. Gaba? No. Gaba? No. Alright. Does that look sort of 3D a little bit? Kind of? Okay. And then what I usually do is I'll, I'll do some little bit of shading here. Very simple, of course. And then I'll do I'll even do a little bit of shadow because a lot of times the sun is shining on one side of it, so that creates a shadow. Oh, speaking of the sun, that's how I draw a sun. And then that's my moon. Star. Cool. You guys all right? Okay. What else? What, what other kind of things? You know what's, what's a good trick is to have um, what I call an icon library. So then as you go to lectures, a lot of times the same things keep coming up. And so you don't have to think of a new icon every single time. You just have it ready and then you use it every time. So for example, in a lecture, if something comes up about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, almost always I'll draw a little gaba. That's just the way I do it. 
or like obvious ones like if somebody you have emotion or love then I'll just I'll do a heart you know um, what else what else, what other kind of things do you guys draw would you draw why don't you guys tell me what kind of stuff do you want to know how to draw yeah years years all right you ready for this buckle your seat belts bam is it <laughs> does that look like an ear a little bit? I know it doesn't really that much, but to me it does enough that I can use it. What about your ear? How do you draw it? Oh, awesome. Well, if you're willing to share that, I would love to see it. You want to do it? However you want to do it. Okay. Yeah. Tell me your name one more time. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. 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 going to show us how to draw it here. Cool. Oh, that's cool. That's really, uh, that's better than mine. Quite better. Okay. I think I'm going to steal your ear. That's another thing. I'm not saying you go to 7-Eleven and steal, but I am saying steal people's um, good drawing ideas. So like Lena just shared her ear idea, right? Bam, stolen. I'm gonna do it now, sure. Um, another thing I actually forgot to talk about is um, handwriting. So a lot of times, one really nice thing to do is to be, maybe, no, I don't want to say, I'm gonna take a picture of that. Um, is um, you want to make things like a little bit more emphasized, right? So you're writing something. So I'll just say you got A, B, C. That would be the just normal writing. But you want to emphasize it. Here's what you do. It's actually a really simple trick. You write the letter, whatever, whatever the letter is. And then you go over it one more time with a little bit of space. Like that. Like that, like that. Then you just connect the ends of it. This is all kind of connected already. Bam, like that. And then you can just color, color it in if you want. See that? And so it kind of gives it like, for example, a lot of times if you want a title, you might want to do it that way, right? Does that make sense? And the trick for good handwriting is like, so well, let me just show you what my handwriting normally looks like. Like, I'll just do like, it would sort of be like that. That's how I would normally probably write it. But the trick to, to writing neatly and in the way that you can read it and other people can read it is you break it down into, into steps. The first thing is you do is you just focus on the one letter that you're writing at that moment, okay? So I want to write a D, so I just make sure that, that that D looks good. It's good enough. If I'm ready to write a D, make sure that D looks good to me, right? So just focus on that one letter at a time. And the style, there's so many different styles of writing letters, you know? Um, it's a whole art actually, they, they call it lettering in English. Um, and, and, and in Arabic, like, you, you know, Islamic art traditionally actually is very focused, oh, look, look right there, so it's focused on, um, the, it's, it's the calligraphy that is the art. There's, and there's, there's so much to it, there's a whole science, I mean, much of the Turks is an example, they really perfected in, in the Ottoman time, they really perfected this art, mashallah. If you go to, if you ever get a chance to go to Turkey, so much beautiful, um, artwork and it all revolves around uh, calligraphy, lettering. So anyway, in English, for me, I'm, I mainly write in English. But you can do. I mean, if you know, for example, a lot of people they might know their um, how to do their names, right? So if you just slow down, focus on each letter at a time, um, then you can it can come out. It'll come out much better. Okay. 
What else? What else do you guys want to draw? Yes. Yes, yeah, something. Oh, I thought you were seeing that. Yes, great. Um, the, for me, it's a bunch of stuff, but mainly, uh -huh. uh, well, maybe not mainly, uh, maybe like improve in drawing a car. Car. The okay. only car I can draw yeah. is a van. If I try to draw just something else, it looks so. That's okay. <laughs> For some reason, it always turns out to be a van. I don't get it. Well, okay. Let's let's do it. Let's do a, a regular car. This is how I do it. Circle, another circle, and then I connect the two. Then come through the front of the car and then connect it to the back. That's it, that's my car at least. And sometimes if I want to show there's moving, I'll do these lines. Okay. So since we're getting, we'll, we'll wrap up at, at nine and shot, so people have time to do uh, we'll do and stuff. Um, so, oh yeah, yeah, you know. Nose? Okay, let's do nose. You want it on a face or a nose by itself? You don't? Okay, all right, all right, all right. You want it on a face or do you want it by itself floating? On a face. On a face, okay. So it depends on what kind of face you're doing and it depends on the style. So let's just start with this. Typically the eyes are gonna be about halfway down, right? So there's your eyes. And then you can do nose a lot of ways. You can do just a line and then two dots. That's one way to do it. You can do, um, you can make it come out like that a little bit if you want. Um, sometimes you do like a like a profile. You can do like from the side to say that there's there's lighting, and then the person kind of like that. You know, this person looks a little bit wicked, but that's a nose. Does that help? <laughs> Black down noses. Yes? All right. Awesome. Um, okay, cool. So, the last five minutes here. Anything else before I get to my closing? Oh, yes, sir. Like, how would you draw the Eiffel Tower? Oh, man. <laughs> First of all, before you put me on spot, do you know how to draw it? you want to do it for us? You already have an idea? Yeah, I tried to draw it here. Let's see it. Whew. Right here. No. Oh my God! Yeah. You should be teaching the Eiffel drawing. That was drawing class. Look at that. Oh, that's oh, that's nice. Nice. It's Kaba too. Look at all these hajis like doing the off and stuff. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, no, that's that's great. I think you're. Uh, that's what I would. That's a better Eiffel Tower than I was gonna do. So I think let's let's just stick with your Eiffel Tower. And our Eiffel Tower. Because it's Eiffel Tower. All right. Um, okay. Anything else for my closing? Okay. This one. So let, let's just do a quick review. How how was this? What, was this useful to you guys at all? Or uh, you can be honest. I will. I'll try not to cry. You know, like I said, I had I had I had the opportunity to to study with with Mike, and then there's a lot of other. Um, tricks and, and, and useful stuff. So if this is something enjoyable to you, I strongly recommend you get, actually, this is his first book, but this book, this is his second book, even better. Um, I would strongly recommend you read that. But the second thing is, although, you know, we're all local, I think, we're, you know, community here. Um, if there's interest, maybe we can convince Brother Munir for us to do this more once in a while, just have like a workshop for whoever is interested, maybe not a high frequency time where we're competing with other uh, programs. Um, but maybe we can do something like that. And uh, I created a, a Facebook uh, group ju just for, for sketch noters in this community. So if you want to be in it, uh, maybe I can pass around a, ca a card or something. Um, and you guys can uh, let me know and I can add you to it. And the benefit of that is then we can have a safe place to share our sketch notes with each other. And I found that it's, it's, very, um, it's very encouraging when you do that. One of the things that Mike Rohde says to do 
is that when you sketch note, he says to share on social media. So I started doing that. I started tweeting it out. I started I put it on Facebook and Instagram and stuff. And it was very encouraging because other people would see it and, and they would make comments about it. And, and in fact, some people like, especially when I sketch noted Islamic lectures, like the one I showed you guys earlier, um, I got a lot of response from that. And you know, the hope is at the end of the day that if even one person benefits from that, inshallah ta'ala will get reward. You know, that's, um, that's something good for us. Um, so anyway, that's, that's my uh, suggestion to everybody. Try out this technique, carry a pen with you, carry a notebook with you, and um, oh, um, when you, next time you go to, to a lecture, just next lecture you go to, just, you know, this, this simple homework assignment, should, should you choose to accept it, is to sketch note the, the next lecture you go to. And then ideally share it. Um, like I said, it, it's just, let me just find the name of it. Um, if, you, um, if you join this group, how can I do this, Brother Munir? Can I, yeah. can I send out the, the Facebook group to you or something? Or should I show the name of it? It'll be on the Facebook group. We can post to that. And then I can put a mention on the newsletter this week. Everybody's oh, on the newsletter. Okay. You send it to me, inshallah. Okay, I'll send it to you, inshallah, without it. And then whoever's interested um, can join that. So, j just so you can see it, this is, this is the group. Um, so does that sound interesting to you guys? Would that be useful? Okay. All right. Awesome. Jazakallah uh, khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our efforts, inshallah, ta'ala, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us um, all the khair that came out of this and protect us from any harm that came out of this. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to practice all the ayahs of the Quran and be means of transmitting knowledge. Um, and uh, I, I ask you guys as well to uh, forgive me for my shortcomings.